and the new facility, when might it be up and running? Oh, well, thank you. So we have uh, one facility in Toulouse, France already that we're inaugurating a first line on June 27th this year. And then we'll be inaugurating two lines Hopefully Q1 of 18, possibly the end of this year, but uh, a lot of things have to go smoothly for Q4 of 17. All dependence on the builders. What about the actual constellation that you envisage of mm -hmm. satellites bringing the next four billion, as you talk about, it with to the internet? When does that really start to become a reality? So we are on track now, and more than on track, actually accelerating our track to bridge the digital divide by 2027. If you look, we've made a statement originally to connect every school of the world by 2022, and there's about two million un connected schools globally and we're going to move from connecting every school to being able to connect everybody that means that they can have a GDP adjusted internet to high-speed access available then it sounds incredibly philanthropic in many ways and, in, and a very good positive outcome for many of those who aren't connected there also must be so much appetite from many business perspectives particularly the telecom sector 5g is ringing in everyone's ears at uh, where, where are you finding the appetite from potential clients coming from well, the, the appetite is as you said just it's everywhere. Uh, now, I really enjoy it when people say, well, is this a philanthropy? Is this, are you doing it as a pure donation? And the answer is no, it's sustainable. It, is gonna, it will be a profitable business, for sure. But it will accomplish some really good things for humanity. The most important thing we can do is bring the other half of the world, 54% of the world, online. Because without access to the internet, the kids and the, and the people everywhere in those, in those regions have no ability to be uh, economically rel related to us. And so they stagnate. Talk to us about how it is profitable, because I think of Iridium, I think of Global Star. These were social network, well, well satellite networks built, hopefully, to bring the internet, and and they ran out of money, bankruptcy, some were bought out. How do you not have that problem? Well, the, the history in satellites, broadband satellites especially, is pretty bad. There's been a, a number of bankruptcies. Uh, O3B, which is a company that I founded, actually was the first one to go through the whole thing without a bankruptcy, which uh, we were very lucky. It did. It was it was through a lot of luck and, and certainly hard work, um, and that was very successful and is very successful today. Uh, so, but if you look at the other companies, um, the key thing, first of all, Spectrum. Yeah. Whenever I talk to an investor, it's spectrum, spectrum, spectrum. And then we get to the rest of the conversation. And if you look at uh, Iridium, for instance, they have about 7.5 megahertz of spectrum, where we have about 3,500 3, megahertz of spectrum. So it's a completely different ballgame for what we're doing. But Iridium also is designed to go to a small handset, a handheld outside for emergency situations. We're designed to go broadband to the home, broadband to the plane, broadband to the connected car. When I say broadband, I mean hundreds of megabits per second and eventually gigabit per second. So the use case is just so much wider when it comes to something like OneWeb. It's IoT, 5G backhaul, which will be, you, you cannot roll out 5G everywhere. All, millions of these little sites without having proper backhaul to those, to those sites. I'm going to go back to competition because we're talking about the ones that failed. But then we're looking at some of the ones that are also wanting in on the game. And I'm looking at SpaceX. I mean, what, what does it mean if Elon Musk is casting his eye over it? It looks as though that SpaceX is having discussions with the FCC even. Is this something that more players are, is better? Or There's not? about 10 or 11 people that have filed for trying to get some of the US spectrum. That's not international spectrum. So the FCC, the way spectrum works is it's under the ITU which is under the UN. So globally, every other country but the US follows the UN. The US is kind of on its own path. Uh, so there's, we have the priority spectrum rights globally uh, with the UN and the ITU, and also we have also filed with the FCC. They've, uh, they've made some very positive statements recently, so we're, we're excited about what's coming. And the last time that I spoke to you, it was before the announcements came that you were merging with Intelsat. You, of course, had had the money coming in from SoftBank, and now the deal is due to close third quarter. Can you even uh, us an update of how that is going? Because the big debt exchange is, is on Intel. Uh, the there's equation. so much going on and so many people talking. I, I, I couldn't give you a, a real good play-by-play -play at the second because it's uh, there's just too much. There, there's, there's many, many emails flying around and activity, uh, but it will be exciting, and uh, it, and so we're we're looking forward to to the eventual outcome.